drugs used in peptic ulcer disease. Now peptic ulcer is a lesion of the gastrointestinal tract, typically the stomach and the duodenum, caused by damage to the mucosa and deeper tissues due to acid and pepsin. The acid is secreted by the parietal cells and the pepsin is secreted by the chief cells. Now the causes of uh, peptic ulcer can include three major things. First, it can be due to an H. pylori infection. Secondly, it can be caused due to stress in chronic disease patients. And thirdly, it can also be induced by NSAIDs. Now, to understand the physiology of uh, gastric acid release from parietal cells, I'll draw here a parietal cell along with some of the stomach mucosa and the red lesion will show the stomach ulcer or peptic ulcer. Now the final step of gastric acid release is the activity of the hydrogen potassium ATPase which is, which is basically an antiport which uh, secretes hydrogen in exchange for potassium. The four receptors I've drawn here are to be acted upon different stimuli to increase or inhibit the gastric acid secretion. First is the histamine which acts on H2 receptors, increasing gastric acid secretion. Acetylcholine acting on M1 also increases it. PGE2 on the other hand will inhibit gastric acid secretion and gastrin will also increase gastric acid secretion. Now I'll mention the drugs and their site of action on this diagram. Firstly, we can use H2 antagonists, which will act on the site labeled as 1. Secondly, we can use M1 antagonists, which will act on the site labeled as 2. Thirdly, we can use prostaglandin analogs, which will act on the site labeled as 3. Sadly, we do not have any gastrin antagonists. Next, we can use proton pump inhibitors, which will inhibit the proton pump. We can also use sucral fate, which will act on the site 6 and cover the ulcer and promote healing. Lastly, we can use antacids, which will neutralize the acid in the lumen. Coming to the classification of the drugs used in peptic ulcer disease, we have the drugs which inhibit gastric acid secretion, then we have drugs which are ulcer protectives, next are acid neutralizing agents, and lastly we have anti-H pyloric agents. The four classes of drugs that inhibit gastric acid secretion are proton pump inhibitors, H2 receptor antagonists, anti-muscarinic agents, specifically M1, and prostaglandin analogs. The acid neutralizing agents can be non-systemic as well as systemic. The first class of drugs which will inhibit gastric acid secretion are proton pump inhibitors. What they do is basically they inhib inhibit the proton pump that is hydrogen potassium ATPase irreversibly that is they are non-competitive inhibitors. That increases their duration of action, although they have a short half-life. How they reach this site is that they are absorbed in small intestine because they are given in enteric coated tablets. They diffuse to the blood and then they diffuse back to the parietal cells. And in the acidic pH, they are converted into the active charged form known as sulfenamide. They are the most powerful and most commonly used um, drugs for peptic ulcer. Now two important food interactions regarding proton pump inhibitors are that food will decrease the absorption of proton pump inhibitors so they need to be administered 30 minutes before food because food will increase acid secretion and thus the active form of the drug will be in high concentration when it is diffused uh, from the blood into the parietal cells. They have a short half-life and a long action because they are non-competitive irreversible antagonists. They are highly bound to plasma proteins and they are used in peptic ulcers, all forms of peptic ulcers. They also decrease the risk of aspirational pneumonia. They are also used in Zollinger-Ellison syndrome.
because there is hypergastrinemia leading to peptic ulcers and they also are the drug of choice for gastroesophageal reflux disease. Now you need to remember three important side effects. One is decreased vitamin B12 absorption because parietal cell release of acid and intrinsic factor is inhibited. And on chronic use, it can lead to hypergastrinemia because we're inhibiting gastric acid production so the body increases gastrin production, which can lead to gastric tumors. And lastly, and the most important one, is hyperprolactinemia. How that happens is that the P450 is inhibited uh, by PPIs which lead to inhibited metabolism of estrogen. In increased estrogen in the body leads to increased prolactin and thus in the males we can see gynecomastia and erectile dysfunction while in the females there is galactoria and menstrual disturbances. The chief drugs are omeprazole which is the prototype, esomeprazole, lansoprazole and pantoprazole. The esomeprazole, lansoprazole and pantoprazole are present in parenteral formulations as well and pantoprazole has minimum drug interactions. Now coming to the H2 receptor antagonists, they act chiefly on the H2 receptors on the parietal cell and block them competitively and reversibly so they are less potent than proton pump inhibitors. Their main use is to inhibit the nocturnal acid secretion. The chief drugs that are involved in this category are cimetidine, which is a prodrug, ranitidine is a longer acting, more potent with rare drug interactions. It does not cross blood brain barrier has no anti-adrenergic action and thus no hyperprolactinemia. Famotidine has also no anti-adrenergic effect and higher bioavailability. Nizatidine has higher bioavailability. Now the use of H2 receptor antagonists are basically in peptic ulcer disease Zollinger Allison syndrome, GERD, and post preoperative um, use to prevent aspirational pneumonia, but they are overall less effective than proton pump inhibitors. Next, we can use anti muscarinic agents, which are specifically selective for M1, and they are not usually used because they have decreased efficacy and serious side effects which are atropine like side effects. Chief drugs are pyrenzepine and telenzepine. Next we can use prostaglandin analogs such as misoprostol which is a PGE1 analog. It inhibits gastric acid secretion, increases the secretion of mucus, increases bicarbonate secretion and it also increases the mucosal blood flow so it has a cytoprotective effect. Now any drug which has a prost in it means it's a prostaglandin analog and it is contraindicated in pregnancy because it will cause uterine contraction and abortion. Now the peptic ulcer protective drugs include two drugs mainly. First is sucralfate. What it does is that in acidic pH of the stomach, it polymerizes to form a sticky polymer that adheres to the ulcer base to protect it. It also precipitates proteins at the site to wall off the ulcer from further damage. It also increases prostaglandin release, mucus release, it releases epidermal growth factor and increased bicarbonate secretion. They should be take, taken one hour before meal, so they have a protective effect. And Antacids, H2 blockers and PPIs should not be used uh, along with sucralfate because it needs acidic pH to work. It can be used in GERD with esophagitis. The second ulcer protective agent is bismuth preparations such as bismuth subsalicylate and colloidal bismuth subcitrate. 
The mechanism of action is not clear, but the side effects include blackening of tongue and stools. Now, acid neutralizing agent, what is an ideal antacid? It should be insoluble and not absorbed. It should not liberate carbon dioxide. It should not disturb the acid-base balance of the body. It should be quick, prolonged action, inexpensive. The buffer range should be between 1 and 6 and less drug interactions should be there. Now, non-systemic acid neutralizing agents include magnesium hydroxide, aluminium salts, magnesium salts, and calcium carbonate. They react with the HCl in the stomach to produce salts, and that is their antacid action, basically. But to prevent alkalosis, they in the intestine, they neutralize the bicarbonate, which is not absorbed, so they do not cause metabolic alkalosis. Aluminium salts will cause uh, constipation and they are slow acting while magnesium salts will cause diarrhea and they are fast acting. Calcium can be absorbed, uh, calcium salts can be absorbed uh, and cause hypercalcemia. The chief drug int interaction will be due to the increased pH of the stomach which decreased, absorb decreased the absorption of some drugs such as iron tetracycline which is a chelator and ketoconazole. The systemic acid neutralizing agents chiefly are sodium bicarbonate and sodium citrate. Sodium bicarbonate's disadvantages are that it is short acting. It has a high water solubility so it is rapidly absorbed causing metabolic alkalosis. It releases carbon dioxide. Um, it has a rebound acidity. The systemic uh, acid neutralizing agents should be avoided in hypertensives and congestive heart failure patients because they cause sodium retention. Lastly, we have anti-H. pyloric agents which fight the H. pyloric infection associated with gastritis, duodenal ulcers, gastric ulcers and even gastric carcinoma. Now the mechanism of how H. pylori causes ulcers is not clear but maybe the ammonia produced by the organism can cause the damage. To treat this type of infection, multi-drug regimes are used, which are for about one to two weeks, to prevent reoccurrence of the infection and to prevent drug-resistant form of the H. pylori. Now, the triple regimen include lansoprazole, clarithromycin, and amoxicillin, while the quadruple regimen include omeprazole, colloidal bismuth sulfate, tetracycline, and metronidazole. The amoxicillin should be tested for hypersensitivity because some patients are allergic to penicillin. Resistance is not rapidly developed to amoxicillin. After the patient has completed the triple or quadruple regimen, the patient should continue proton pump inhibitors for about 6 weeks to let the gastric mucosa heal. That's all about the drugs used in peptic ulcer disease.